Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do a tag video today. I don't do these videos very often, but this one really caught my eye. It was created by Hannah over at Smoky Glow, uh, whom I watch, and uh, she's just really, she's super cute. She's like really, really perky. And she created this tag, the small creator tag. So there are 14 questions to this tag, and if you're interested in hearing my answers to these questions, then just keep on watching. I really wanted to do this tag as like a get ready with me, just so you had something a little bit more like visually interesting to watch than just just me like shooting off at the mouth, but I have a really hard time doing two things at once. So <laughs> so we're just gonna be talking, we're just gonna be chit-chatting. So if this is not your kind of video, then definitely click off, but we're not gonna be talking about makeup or anything specifically, and I'm not actually gonna be showing you anything. Uh, we're just gonna be, we're just gonna be chatting. We're just gonna be getting to know one another a little bit better. So let's start. All right, so the first question is, how many years have you been on YouTube? So my very first video, I believe I posted on May, sometime in May 2016. So I've personally been on YouTube for about two and a half years. Uh, but if this question is asking like, how long have I been watching YouTube regularly? I want to say I started watching at the end of like 2014 was when I really got into watching makeup videos on YouTube, like obsessively. <laughs> Uh, number two, what was your very first video about? So my very first video was a haul video, but it was a haul of yarn and fiber. So for those of you who don't know, I am a hand knitwear designer. So this very first video was my haul from when I went to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival uh, in May of 2016. And I actually had my very good friend, Allison, on with me. And so we talked about what we purchased um, and yeah, and it was a lot of fun. And I remember I bought a lot of fiber to spin with. So I, I design hand knitwear, but I obviously like to knit. And I also like to spin, which in my world doesn't necessarily mean cycling. Uh, it means to actually make yarn out of fiber, either on a spinning wheel or on a spindle or whatever. So, uh, so that's what my very first video was about. Number three, who is your dream collab? Oh, that's a good question. So there are a few collab scenarios. I guess collab with another YouTuber would definitely be with Tara Babies. I don't think I've ever seen her collab with anyone and she really just posts, you know, once a week on Saturdays, generally. Sometimes she gives us some bonus videos during the week, of which I always get very excited about. But usually she just does haul videos on Saturdays. So that doesn't, those videos don't really lend themselves to collabs, but I would do, I would do anything. Like even if it was to like stand behind her while she's hauling and just hand her her things or to help her swatch like a creepy stalker, I would totally, I would totally do that. She doesn't even have to mention who I am. I would just be that creepy person in the background. Uh, in terms of like, like a makeup brand and collab, that is so far beyond anything I've ever thought of. Of course, I'm thinking of all the brands that I absolutely love, like Pat McGrath, but that's too intimidating. I wouldn't want to collab with Pat McGrath because she, she should just do her thing without any involvement from anyone else. Maybe Surratt? God, that's too much. Okay, the idea of collabing with an actual makeup company is kind of blowing my mind, so I have absolutely no answer for you. Number four, what would it mean to you to make it on YouTube? To me, like, I, f I really do feel like I've already made it. As soon as I got a comment that was like, um, thank you so much, you really helped me in either deciding whether or not to purchase a product, like, that's really why I started my channel. I really wanted to just help people become informed with their purchasing decisions. Um, so as soon as I got a comment like that, I was like, like, I feel like my work here is done. But something that I actually just recently learned about, <laughs> I don't know, I live under a rock. I really live under a rock. But when you reach 100,000 subscribers, you get like this plaque from YouTube and it's like this silver like play button. I'm like, I want one of those. I just think it looks really cool and it would just be nice to have. So I'll say that, that will be my answer to get a silver play button, which is 100,000 subscribers. For me, that would be like making it on YouTube, that silver play button. Okay, question number five, what is your end goal on YouTube? I don't really have an end goal. I don't, I don't even really have a goal. At first I wanted to, you know, talk about knitting or whatever. That's a whole nother story. And in fact, I think there's another question related to that, but I just wanted to come on here and just sort of share information and that's it. You know, whether one person watched or a hundred people watched, or, you know, I got a hundred subscribers or a thousand, like none of that actually ever meant anything to me when I first started. 
Of course, now that you kind of get into it and you get to know other creators and you start talking numbers, you're like, oh, like all of a sudden these things are kind of important to me. But but not really in the grand scheme of things. They're really not that important to me. And so my end goal, I don't know. And, and I feel like the term end goal kind of signifies like once you reach this goal, then your whole process is over. Then it's like, then I would go off of YouTube. And I can't imagine anything, me reaching anything that would cause me to stop doing YouTube. At least that's how I'm kind of interpreting end goal. But I don't really have an end goal, you know? I just kind of like the process. I'm kind of like a techie geek, so I really like learning about the software and the equipment and um, and lighting and sound and editing. Like I'm having a really good time kind of like, it's, it's definitely frustrating. It can be very, very frustrating at times, but I like kind of muddling through that frustration and like learning about stuff. So anyway, uh, I went totally off topic. So I don't really have an end goal for YouTube. Number six, what is the hardest part about YouTube? Hmm. I think a very popular answer is just the time commitment, but I don't find that to be hard. It's just something that needs to be planned out. It's just that one extra layer of planning that kind of goes in my day. So I don't, I don't necessarily find you know, finding the time very, very hard. Um, I also don't have a lot going on in my life. I think the hardest part for me personally, because of the content that I like to create, the hardest part for me is to actually get products when they're released. So, you know, I'm not on um, very many PR lists. I'm only on a couple, which is amazing, um, but I'm not on, like I'm not getting products before they're released. So I get a lot of uh, requests and I like to be able to review products for you as soon as they hit the shelf so that again, like you can be an informed consumer and it's, difficult sometimes. I feel like that's my biggest frustration is like, you know, I see something and I'm like, oh my God, you know, like, let me pick it up. And it's this, it's always this big race. And then like, if there's a delay in shipping, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's like, I have to kind of like rejigger my whole um, filming schedule and like, okay, well, you know, I was going to put that up on Thursday, but now I don't, I'm not even going to get it until Thursday. And it just, it becomes this like game of like, when am I going to get the stuff? When am I going to have time to film it? When am I going to be able to upload it? And then it's like, you know, I upload it and then it's all sold out everywhere. And I'm like, great, I'm talking about something that you can't get. So that's definitely the hardest part for me is like staying on top of new releases, being able to get them, being able to get a video review of them up in a timely fashion, and hopefully having it available for you guys to purchase when I talk about it. So that by far, I think is like the most frustrating and the most difficult part of YouTube for me. What is the best part about YouTube? There's so many good things about YouTube. Personally, I love all the people I've met because of YouTube. Like I've developed some really true good friendships on here, like the Glam Dr. Mona Khan, like Kate the Great Beauty, like Risa, Risa Does Makeup, you know, and this is just to name a few. Georgia Harris, like, I consider these people friends. I can just pick up the phone and start chatting with them. So the relationships I've developed through YouTube and then there's the viewers that I love and that I hope one day I'll be able to meet. But there are some, like I absolutely love, like I have a few viewers that comment on every video and it just makes my day. When I see their names pop up, I'm like, hello, there she is. And then I feel like sometimes when they don't pop up, I'm like, where did they go? And they'll even come back a few videos later and be like, oh, I was on vacation. And I'm like, oh, so I feel like I, I, you know, am a part of their lives and they're a part of my lives. And I just, I absolutely love that part about YouTube. But to answer that question in a more like macro sense, I think YouTube is magical. I think it is the most powerful platform that has been created for the everyday person in a really long time. It has really brought everything back to the people, to the masses. And just, if you just think about the makeup and the beauty arena, it's like we had been dictated by these huge makeup companies what to buy, you know, based on these like commercials with these models who are picture perfect. Now it's like come back to the everyday person. It has, all of the power in the makeup industry is now with like YouTube creators. This has been the most like disrupted industry that we've seen in a really, really long time. And that's all thanks to YouTube. And I just feel like 
that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And that's probably one of the major parts why I even wanted to join this community, why I even wanted to be on YouTube, because I just think that is so powerful. So that's number seven. Number eight, what is the funniest comment you've ever gotten? Gosh, I don't know. I can't think of one specifically, but I love the comments that come in that are like, you know, first one here or <laughs> like a comment that has absolutely nothing to do with the video, but it has everything to do with like the community. Like, I love that. Or ones that are just like, yes, like haul time. Like, I love those videos. The ones that are really just like random comments. They're not necessarily like a question. They're not necessarily like, you know, giving feedback about a particular product that I've been talking about. Like the ones that are just like, like kind of like peanut gallery like comments. I love those. Those are, those are definitely my favorites. <laughs> what is the meanest comment you've ever gotten? So this one, and I actually deleted this comment um, because I don't mind critical comments. I don't mind comments that are, um, you know, negative in that they're poo-pooing something or whatever. That I, I find totally fine. That's what, I mean, these are our opinions. That's fine. But I really don't like when it's put in a nasty way. So this was, I think, when I f got the first three Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. I got all three. And, you know, I was still relatively new on YouTube. And I was so excited for these palettes that I like literally ran upstairs with my package, turned on my camera and just kind of started filming. And uh, my swatches, admittedly, my swatches were not great. And they're also, if you guys know the Pat McGrath palettes, the uh, the four special shades, if you will, like those are interesting and, and difficult to swatch in that the lighting really shifts them. Anyway, the comment was basically like, those were the worst swatches I ever saw what did you eat like fried chicken before and then um, use your greasy fingers to swap like like it just went on and on and on and I was like you could have just said your swatches were not good if you could improve upon them in the future that would be more helpful that's fine that comment is fine because I would have been like you know what you're right <laughs> the swatches kind of suck but this person was just so um angry like anger in the comment section really puzzles me, especially when it comes to like a makeup video. I'm like, how angry can you get? It was so fueled with like hatred and anger that I was like, I just need to delete this comment. Like this, this is not, you know, and I didn't want anyone to think that I was deleting it because I was like hurt or like I didn't agree with the person. It wasn't that, it just was like, it was very poisonous. So I just deleted that comment. But that is by far the meanest comment I've ever gotten. And I've gotten other, you know, like nas nasty type comments, but even nasty to me isn't always kind of like fueled by anger and hatred. Like a nasty comment is just someone that you've just, you know, like, you know, like they're just kind of a miserable person and they pretty much have nothing nice to say about anything. Whatever. I don't really care. Those I like leave up. If they're really, really nasty, maybe I'll like block them or whatever. Feel free to comment on my videos if it's constructive. I am very open to those. Uh, question number 10. What other subject matter could you create a YouTube channel about? Well, I just talked about uh, knitting and spinning um, and sewing and all that kind of like make your own clothing kind of stuff. I could definitely create another channel for. The reason why I kind of steered away from that is because it is my day job. It is what I spend the majority of my time talking about and doing and focusing my energy on that I really wanted YouTube to be more of an escape. So that's really why I stepped away from like doing a knitting channel because I was like, this is too much. Like I can't do it for my work. And then in my free time, set up a camera and talk about it some more. I just, I couldn't do it. So um, I could create a channel uh, on that. And I've actually been and you guys can comment down below if you want, but I've actually been thinking about creating another channel about, oh God. <laughs> you know, it's funny to think of an idea, but it's completely different to actually vocalize it. So I'm giggling thinking about how this is gonna sound, but let me just tell you, I am a big fan of mukbangs. And if you don't know what a mukbang is, they started in South Korea and it's, uh, it's basically an eating show. And in South Korea, it's a little bit more, um, like they'll cook it in front of you either like in a hot pot or like on a hot plate they'll cook the meal in front of you and then they'll eat it in front of the camera and of course now that it's come over to America it's turned into this like 
<laughs> like how much can you eat like in one sitting or like or I'm gonna go through like the drive through at McDonald's and like eat my car. Of course we've Americanized the mukbang um, but I really enjoy watching them. I love eating. I love food. Like I love junk food to fine dining. So anyway, I thought because so much of the mukbangs done here in America are very kind of like fast food or junk food based, um, or like how to cook healthy at home. I thought because this is another one of my favorite things to do is like, what if I did mukbangs with like fine dining, which is like so random, but just set up my iPhone when I go out to eat here in Vegas, because there's so many amazing restaurants on the strip. There's obviously some off of the strip, um, but I really, really love to go out to restaurants and dine. And I thought maybe I could start a fine dining mukbang channel. Let me know what you guys think about that. Anyway, uh, so that is the answer to question number 10. Question number 11, why did you start your YouTube channel? So I think I've touched upon it a little bit, but like the mindset that I was in when I started my YouTube channel was I had just had a yarn store. I had a yarn store in Brooklyn. It was open only on the weekends and I had it open for about a year and a half. And I was kind of like subleasing a little section uh, from this company called Brooklyn Craft Company. Definitely check them out if you're interested, if you're ever in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And uh, they were moving spots and I had put in my time, you know, working seven days a week for a year and a half. I was like, you know what, I'll hang up my hat. So I just, I closed my little store. It was great. I loved having it while it was open. In fact, I loved it so much more than I thought I would. I I was a little bit terrified about having an actual retail space, but it was such a great experience. I met so many amazing people and it was just awesome. And I remember kind of like, you know, exhaling after the entire experience and sitting down with myself and trying to figure out like, what exactly was it that you loved about having that space? It definitely wasn't the working seven days a week. It definitely wasn't the, you know, unpacking boxes and all that kind of stuff. So I realized that it was like making those connections with people. Like nothing made me happier than introducing like a new yarn to a knitter maybe they had never heard of it or maybe they had heard of it but had never been able to purchase any and then having that person come back the next week and saying oh my god this yarn was amazing thank you so much do you have any more of it or whatever i loved kind of like introducing something new to the knitter and so after closing the shop i thought well how can i continue doing that because i really like doing it so that was the impetus behind my youtube channel so I moved that over into makeup. And so I really wanted to talk about makeup and beauty products that I didn't see being talked about on YouTube. It's like now I know why I was very naive about YouTube and beauty channels and what went on, especially with like PR. And now I get it. Now I know why everyone is always kind of talking about the same products because they were all sent the same packages. I didn't know that then. And I was like, why don't people talk about Tom Ford makeup, you know, like it obviously does well. People obviously are buying it, but why isn't anyone talking about it? Or um, or Sisley skincare. So anyway, so that was that was why I started my channel to begin with, and then that is why I moved over into makeup, and then that's why I kind of talk about the things I talk about in my makeup videos. Number twelve. Uh, what video are you embarrassed by? So there's two. <laughs> Well, embarrassed by this thumbnail, and I thought about taking down this video because it's actually a review on a limited edition collection anyway, and I thought, no one needs to watch this, no one needs to see this, but I left it up because I'm like, you know what? That's my history on YouTube. That's the path that I walked on YouTube. Um, so that is the very first Dose of Colors Desi and Katie collab. I... I don't know what I did in the photo editing. And I think actually when I uploaded it as a thumbnail, like YouTube altered the coloring a little bit. And I was like, what? And you know, and I just didn't think much of it. And I was like, whatever. But I look insane in that thumbnail. Like my highlight looks crazy. Like, I don't know what happened. And then um, I did a review for the Natasha Denona sunset palette. And I love that palette. And I actually don't mind the eye look that I did, but I was definitely going for something much more artsy than I either explained or wanted to do, or I just didn't also like follow through. Like I did this like kind of crazy eyeshadow look, but nothing else was crazy. Like my hair was down and like I had, 
you know, just lipstick on and, you know, normal clothing. Like I didn't carry it all the way through. So take a look at that video. It's horrible. Both of those videos are pretty horrible. I'm kind of embarrassed by most of my earlier videos, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> those are, those are pretty embarrassing. Um, what video are you the most proud of? Hmm. I think there's a Pat McGrath lip video that I think I'm the most proud of. I think it's the Lust lip glosses that I am the most proud of. You know, it takes a lot to do lip swatches and to, you know, record it and then to edit it. That's actually very, very time consuming. But I just liked that video and I liked, I actually liked my makeup in that video. I thought I did a pretty good job um, on my own makeup and I thought I looked, I thought I looked pretty good. My hair looks good. Anyway, I liked that video, I think the most. Um, and then the last question is, what is your first YouTube memory? So I get this, well, this would be then not as a creator, but as a viewer, I think my very first YouTube memory or the one that really resonated. Like I remember going onto YouTube to watch like funny dog videos and um, funny cat videos um, or watching like old, old um, Grammy awards, like watching like a Michael Jackson uh, performance at like the 1983 Grammys or something like that. But I think the most profound like first YouTube memory I have is watching Tara Baby's makeup collection video. If you guys haven't seen that, it is so epic, so epic. And they're long because she has a lot of makeup and there's two parts. And I just remember being like, and I remember I was like laying in bed and I was on my iPad and I'm like, what is even happening here? Like, this is so amazing. And my husband was like in bed with me and he got up and he went to shower and he came back and he was like, are you still watching this video? I was like, it's this girl's makeup collection. He was like, She's got a lot of shit. I was like, she has so much makeup. I was like, that is amazing. It was so amazing. It was like one of the most beautiful things I had ever seen. So that is definitely the most like impactful first YouTube memory that I ever had for sure. So that's it for this tag video. I, I tag all of you out there. If any of you are creators out there, uh, this is a really fun tag to do. And thank you so much to Hannah of Smoky Glow for creating this tag. This was awesome. Very creative. And let me know if you have any comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.